In this lesson, we'll be going over how you can edit a photo using Affinity Designer with both vector and pixel-based elements, as you can see that I've done here. Now, what I did was I started off with this regular headshot and ended up with this outcome that I will be demonstrating. Now, this headshot is just an AI-generated person that I downloaded. If you'd like to follow along with what I'm doing, I will link a copy of this image in the description of the video. Otherwise, you can use your own image. Just make sure to remove the background first, as you can see that I've done there. So to get us started, let's open a new document by going to File and selecting New. I'm going to size my document at 800 by 800 pixels, and I will click Create. So the first thing I'm going to create is the background, which is this blue and pink gradient that you see here. So let's enable snapping using that magnet icon up there. Let's grab the rectangle tool and snap to the top left corner and then click and drag and then snap to the bottom right corner like that. Now I'm going to give this a blue shade, probably a lighter shade like that. And now I'm going to give this a gradient. So let's come over here to the fill tool and select linear from where it says type. I'm going to select this end of the gradient and I will make this end pink or purple, some kind of shade like that, and maybe even make it a little lighter. And then I will bring this end of the gradient down here to the bottom of the page. And I'll take this end of the gradient and bring it to the top of the page like that. And I'll even shift this gradient down. I'll take this middle handle and bring this down like that so that we have the pink towards the bottom third and the blue towards the top two thirds. And now I want to lock this layer so that it doesn't get in the way for what I'm going to do next. So let's come over here and click on this lock icon. And now that rectangle will not uh, change if we click on it. We can continue working without this getting in our way. So the next part we're going to create is over here, this circle made of strokes. So to do that, I'm going to grab the pen tool over here, or you could press the letter P on your keyboard to access it. And I'm going to bring my cursor over here to the left end of the page and click to create a point. Hold shift, bring the line straight across the screen like that, and then click again to create another point, and then press the escape key to close the path. And now I'll come over here to the stroke tab and make this stroke a little bigger like that. So now we're gonna create a bunch of copies of this stroke. So let's zoom in on it, grab our selection tool, and to create a copy, I'm gonna hold alt and shift and click and drag down like that to make a copy, just like that. And now to repeat that, I'm going to press Control J. So I'm going to press Control J a bunch of times over and over again to make these copies. If you're using Mac, it's Command J. And there we go. So let's click and drag over all of those and merge them together by going to Layer, Geometry, and select Merge Curves. And now I'm going to create a circle over these. So I'm going to turn off snapping for now, and I'm going to grab the Circle tool and click and drag to create a circle. I'm going to hold shift while doing so to have a nice round circle like that. Make sure the height is just higher, just bigger than the stack of strokes that you have there. And I'm going to remove the stroke from this object and I'll change the color to something else just temporarily so we can differentiate it. And now let's grab this selection tool, select both objects and let's align them on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And now we can grab our Shape Builder tool over here and then select the Subtract option in the Tool Settings menu. And now we can just draw a line going through these strokes like that to get rid of them. And there you go. Now we can grab the Selection tool. Let's take this circle and get rid of it. Press Delete on the keyboard. And now we could take this and rotate this around. I'm going to hold Shift while doing this to lock it onto 15 degree increments and I'll make it about that size right there. Then let's come over here to the Stroke tab where it says scale with object. Let's make sure we have that enabled while we're working with this so that we can scale this object without disrupting the proportions of the strokes. And I'm going to scale this down. So I'm gonna hold shift while doing this. Put this towards the center of the page. I'm gonna center this vertically. And I'll come back over here to the color tab and I will make this a different color. So let me select the stroke color and I will choose a lighter shade of yellow, something like this. And I'm actually going to change the size of that stroke a little bit. I'm going to adjust this. Uh, this is just a matter of personal preference. If you want to use thinner lines, you can do that. I'm going to use lines about, I'd say about that thick is pretty good. We can always go back and change this later on if you want. In fact, we probably, we probably will change this later on. So for now, I'm going to leave that as it is. Now, if you notice what I did here with this stroke, there's a little bit of an orange gradient in here. So let's do that. Let's do the same thing over here. With the object selected, we'll go to the fill tool change the context to stroke, 
and then change the type to linear. I'll select this end of the gradient up here, come back over to the color tab, and I will make this a different shade, maybe something like orange. And now I want the orange end of the gradient to be down here and the yellow end up here. So I'm just going to reverse this gradient. To do that, I'm going to click this button up here that says reverse gradient. And I may even shift this down a little bit. Okay, so that's finished. The next step would be to create this white triangle here. So let's do that now. Let's, uh, let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Grab the Shapes tool down here. If you hold a click over the Shapes tool down here, you'll notice we have all of these different shapes to choose from. I'm going to grab the Triangle tool, and I'm going to click and drag to create a triangle like this. And I want the, the stroke of this triangle to be white. And then I will select the Fill color and remove the fill from that triangle like that. And then I'm going to flip this vertically. I'm going to grab the Selection tool, center this on the page, and then just position this right above the circle like that. You may have to make you may have to make it bigger or smaller depending on how big it was when you created it. And right there, that looks pretty good. I'm going to leave that as it is. And uh, the next part of the lesson now, we're going to focus on the image. So let's import our image into the document here. Uh, you could either copy and paste it or drag and drop it. What I'm going to do is I already have my image opened up over here, so I'm going to select it and go to Edit, Copy, and then come over here and go to Edit, paste. And I'm going to center this on the page. I'm going to align it to the bottom of the page. And I will scale this down. So I'm going to hold Shift while doing this. I'll make this about that big. And what we're going to do now is we're going to create this open head concept in here. So to do that, uh, well, to do that, first we want to rasterize this layer so that we can make more advanced edits to it. So I'm going to right click on the layer and go down to where it says uh, rasterize. And now I'm going to grab the ellipse tool, the circles and ellipses tool, and zoom in over here. And right up here towards the about halfway through the forehead, I'm going to click and drag to create an ellipse going through the subject's head here like this. This is going to represent where the open head concept is. And I'm going to remove the stroke color first. And then I'm going to apply a new fill color. The fill color I want to be a similar shade to the skin tone, but one of the lighter shades. So I'm going to grab my dropper up here, and I'm going to sample a skin tone that's one of the lighter shades. And I'll click on that to fill it. There we go. And I may even make this a little lighter. OK, that looks good. And now we're going to apply a linear gradient. So let's come back up here to the Fill tool. Let's choose Linear from this dropdown. And for this end, I want it to be the same skin tone, but just a little darker. So uh, I'm going to go with something like that right there. There we go. That looks pretty good. And now what I will do is let me just zoom in on this to make sure that I have this aligned to the edges here. We don't want it sticking out too much, but we don't want it too short at the same time. We want it to be just on the edge there like that. And the same thing over here. We want this to be just on the edge as well. And now I'm going to duplicate this. So let's right click on the ellipse layer and go to duplicate. And I want to fill this one with a darker color. I'm going to use the hair as a reference. So I'm going to grab my dropper and sample a color from the hair. And I'm going to fill that copy in with that hair color there. And I'm going to scale this down, but I'm going to hold shift and control while doing this so it scales from the center so that we end up with something like this right here. I'll even move this up a little bit to accommodate for the aspect for the uh, perspective. This shot, this edge should be thicker than this edge up here, and I'll even bring the sides out a little more just so we have some more space in there. And to make sure everything's centered, I will turn on snapping temporarily, and then just center it up like that. There we go. Now I could turn off snapping. Okay, so let me move that down a little bit. I'm going to use my arrow keys. There we go. That looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is. We're going to cut off the top of the head here. So to do that, we're going to grab the Rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw a rectangle that starts at, through the center of this ellipse right here and goes all the way down and covers the entirety of the subject. So to do that, let me first turn on Snapping. I want to snap the cursor halfway through that circle, click and drag like that, and bring it all the way to the bottom like this so that we end up with that right there. And that's what we're looking for. And once that's done, let me turn off Snapping. I want to take the opacity of this and bring this all the way down. And I want to use that invisible shape as a clipping mask. So I'm going to grab the subject layer here. And I'm going to click and drag and hold it on top of the 
uh, rectangle layer like that so that it creates a clipping mask. Now, if you hold it directly on top, it should create a, a clipping mask, as you can see there. And now you can release it and you end up with that right there like that. And now we could take this and just lower this down beneath the, um, the ellipses there. So to do that, I'm going to press Command and the left bracket key to lower that. I'll press that twice to lower it two steps. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the selection tool. Let's click and drag over all of this over here, the subject and the ellipses, and group it all together by pressing Control G. So now that is a grouped object. And what I'm going to do now is if you notice over here, this kind of trails off into a transparent gradient. So let's do the same thing over here. I'm going to select this. I'm going to grab the transparency tool and I'm going to click and drag down like that. And I'm going to hold shift and bring it down towards the bottom of the page, just like that. Okay, so now that that's done, let's make some edits to the composition here because this image is very far from perfect. We need to make some edits here. So first things first, let's, with the image layer selected, let's select the adjustments options down here, this little half circle. And the adjustment I'm going to start off with is recolor. I'm going to use the recolor option and I'm gonna set the hue to like a pinkish shade and I'm gonna bring the saturation all the way down, not all the way down, but like mostly down so that there's a little bit of coloration in there just like that. And now we can close out of that. So let's adjust the brightness and contrast of this image here so that it looks a little better. I'm gonna add another adjustment, select the image layer so that this adjustment is applied only to this image and nothing else. Open up the adjustments layer again. Let's look for brightness and contrast. And I'm gonna increase the brightness. I'm gonna increase the contrast and I will adjust the brightness accordingly. Maybe I'll go with something like that right there. And that right there already looks better. So now I can close out of that. And I may wanna add just one more adjustment on here. I think I'm gonna do a levels adjustment. So I'm gonna click on that image layer again to make sure I have it selected. And we will add one more adjustment on here. So let's go to levels. I will take the black end and make that a little darker. I'll make the white end and make this a little lighter. And if you notice what's happening here, it's just popping a little more. It just becomes a little more visible. And I'm gonna take the gamma and adjust that until it looks best. So something like that looks pretty good right there. And I think that right there is probably the effect I'm going for. If you wanna change the coloration, you can just click on the original recolor box right here and you could change this color if you'd like. I think I oscillated between blue and pink. I couldn't tell which one I liked better. For this demonstration, I'll just go with pink and I will adjust the saturation a little bit. There we go. And I may even click on these circles over here and make the stroke a little thicker. Again, we can go back and edit all of this later on. And now it's time to add in these other elements here. We have the flamingo and the palm tree. So to do that, let's open up our stock menu. Come up here to where it says window and go to, uh, we're looking for stock. And mine opened up on my other screen. Let me bring it in here. There we go. We have our stock menu. I'm gonna look for the Flamingo. So check, make sure you have Pixabay selected up here. This is the directory we're gonna be looking through. And I'm gonna type in Flamingo and press enter. And the image that I'm looking for is, it should be a Flamingo on a white background. This one right here. So I'm gonna click and drag that onto the canvas. We're gonna get this little window that pops up telling us who created this and what image it is. Close out of that. I'm gonna zoom out here. I'm gonna scale this image down. Whoops, there we go. Scale it down, hold control and shift to scale it down. Let me zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to rasterize this layer. Let's right click the layer and go to rasterize. And now we can remove the background, the white background from this image. So let's come over here to the pixel persona, grab the flood select tool and click on the white area. Click and drag to the right to increase the threshold or to the left to decrease the threshold. I'm gonna bring my threshold right about there and now I will press the delete key to get rid of that background. And now I will deselect everything by going to select and going to deselect. And now I will come back over to the designer persona. I will grab the vector crop tool and it looks like this image is already cropped. So I'm gonna leave it as it is right there. All right, that's looking good. Now I'm gonna scale this down and just fit this within the subject's head here. In fact, I'm gonna rotate this around a little bit like that. There we go, just to give it a little bit of character. And I'll put this down here, right about here. And I wanna erase these parts of the legs. So let's come back over here to the pixel persona. 
grab the eraser tool, and you can make the eraser brush bigger and smaller using your left and right bracket keys. I'm gonna go with something like that right there. There we go, that's looking good. Come back over here to the designer persona. And now we are going to import our image of a palm tree here. So to do that, let's, um, let's come back over here to our stock menu. Let me deselect everything over here. And we're looking for a palm tree on a white background. Now the keywords that I entered to find this image are palm white. So type in palm and white and press enter and it should show up under this query. So I think here it is right here. This palm tree right here, click and drag that onto the canvas. And we will zoom out over here, quite large. We're gonna have to scale this down. And now we will remove the background from this image the same way we did to the flamingo. We can close out of the stock menu now. We don't need this anymore. Uh, once again, we wanna right click the image layer and go to rasterize. And now I will go back to the pixel persona, use the flood select tool. And again, click and drag to the right to create a large selection over the palm tree here like that, or over the background of the palm tree anyway, and then press the delete key to get rid of it. And if you zoom in, we have some leftover areas here. We can just go ahead and do the same thing to remove these leftover areas. Some of the larger ones anyway, I don't think you'll wanna do the whole thing. Let me do this one over here. Okay, that looks good enough as it is. I'm gonna leave that as it is for right now. And now I could take my selection tool. Actually, let's go back to the designer persona and let's grab the selection tool. Let's remove the selection first. We'll go to deselect and now we can edit this as needed. So I'm gonna scale this down. I'll rotate this one the opposite way of the flamingo. And I actually wanna lower this beneath the flamingo. So I'm gonna press command and the left bracket key so that it goes down beneath the flamingo over there. And now I can just remove this part over here. So let me go back to the pixel persona, use the eraser tool, and then just delete this out over here like that. There we go. And come to think of it, I'm, I kind of wanna move the flamingo now. I wanna move the flamingo, whoops. I wanna select the flamingo and move this more into view over here, maybe even make it a little larger. You can make these adjustments on the fly as you see me doing here. You, you probably will, as a matter of fact. You'll probably have to make some kind of adjustments. So once that's done, let me grab my eraser and just update this over here. There we go. Now, if we come back over here to our designer persona, we're pretty much done. The only difference is that um, I, I wanna apply some more color adjustments just to make everything look better. If you notice what I did here with the thumbnail, it looks kind of different over here than it does over here. So I wanna just tie everything together with some global color edits. So let's first make sure you have nothing selected. Press the escape key a couple of times. You should see nothing selected here in the layers menu. And now we're gonna apply an, an adjustment layer to the entire document. So let's come up here to adjustments and let's select, uh, let's start off with a curves adjustment. So I'm gonna select curves and I'm gonna take this handle and bring this up a little bit and I'll take this part of the line and bring that down like that so we end up with something like that right there. And I will change this from master to blue. I'll take the blue channel and just bring that up a little bit so that we add more blue into the dark areas and maybe even bring out some of the blue in the lighter areas like that. And then I will select the red channel and do the same thing. Let me add some more redness to the design. There we go, looking pretty good. And let me close out of that. And I will add another adjustment layer, only this time it will be a vibrant. So let me click off of that to deselect it. We, again, we want nothing selected here. Let's add a vibrance color channel, or adjustment rather. And I will bring that up like this and again, I'm, I'm just adjusting this to my own preference here. I'm just kind of just eyeballing things to see how it looks as I do it. There we go, that's looking pretty good. And in fact, I may even come back over here to my curves adjustment and adjust this a little more. That's the good thing about these adjustments. You can go back and change them anytime you'd like. Okay, that's fine how it is. I'll just leave that right there. That is how you can edit a photo using both vector and pixel-based edits using Affinity Designer.
So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.